Well, it's an important thing, isn't it? That, that um, my uh, my mum. This is when she was about. 60, 65, uh, there was a, a neighbour who was, uh, uh, like, n you know, 85, 90, and, um, again, completely alone, and my mum used to go on there every day, do you want any shopping, do it, right? She, she, was, she, was, she was good for us, she was like a witness in the world, you know, to her existence, but I remember calling her once, and, uh, she'd come back, I said, what have you been doing? She went, oh, I've been around so-and-so, so I went, all right, she went, oh, she won't die, Rick. <laughs> like, she's helping yeah, her, but she's yeah, thinking, yeah, this yeah. is getting silly now. You were meant to go years ago here. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 well, that's the problem, you know, if you, if you get pally with an old person, yeah. then you could be stuck with them for years. And having to do stuff, you know, that's what you don't want to do, is it? You, you, you meet an old, you know, an old fella, and then you've got to start, um, popping in his sort of piles or whatever when he can't do them himself. You know, what do you do? If you're- It depends how friendly you are, though. I mean, I'm just talking about someone you meet at the bus stop, as opposed to popping the piles back in. <laughs> <laughs> How does that happen? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> just the ones on, on the estate I grew up on. As soon as he got to a certain age, there was Mrs. Knowles who went mental. One right. day she seemed fine, next day she was chucking cans in everyone's garden. <laughs> you could you could just hear her coming. <laughs> Which was weird. Aren't you? Now you've brought up weird people. There was a fella called Shorts Man, right? <laughs> so pedestrian! <laughs> oh, I love that! Shorts Man wore some shorts? Now, now, what I like, yeah he did, but they were, they were really short. They were that sort where, you know, it's almost pointless having them on. What do you mean? They were just, you know like shorts now, for blokes, yeah. they go up to your knees, don't they? There's yeah. no chance, there's no accident happening there. There's nothing gonna pop out. Yeah. No. But shorts, man, he liked it. He liked the fact that that happened. Right. And he used to walk with, with big strides to sort of help the chance along. <laughs> so that he what? knew, with the big strides and the sh short shorts, Yeah. they were gonna pop out. Did you ever see it pop out? Yeah. Why were you looking at the shorts? Just because it was, it was like, it was but like, it, it was like playing buckaroo. <laughs> it was like, when are they gonna pop out? But what? <laughs> <laughs> It's just what happened. So, wh right, but so, so, shorts man. <laughs> so he was an exhibitionist. He liked he basically wanted people to yeah. see his veg. Yeah. yeah, and they were out more than they were in. I mean, they, they had a tan, right? <laughs> now the thing is, what what we like in England, I think we like that. We like local characters. The eccentric. Yeah. yeah. Eccentric's very. That's very British. Eccentric. Yeah. And, and yeah. I and I I'm glad I grew up around there with all them people. So am interesting. I. Well, there is a certain. Uh, Mindset about the you know, the great English, certainly the older English people. I mean, my grandparents are, you know, my grandfather died recently, but the amazing kind of eccentric, very English, seemingly um, no friends from what I can identify. I don't know if this is unique to them or true of a lot of English people, uh, older people, terrified of what the neighbours might say. They always did that thing of speaking like that in case of yeah. Yeah. Like the, like the neighbours are constantly listening in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They've got glasses against the wall, they're constantly listening into what my grand's got to say. Yeah. Um, they had about three teeth between them. It was extraordinary. <laughs> my grandfather had a, a plate of false teeth during the war that had a wooden pallet. A wooden upper wow. pallet with teeth on it. And those teeth slowly fell off during the course of the years. Never got, got replaced. Were. So you, they'd sort of invite you to Sunday roast and they would get, they would wake up at six in the morning to put the beef on and they wouldn't have it till six in the evening. <laughs> they would cook it. The biggest compliment you could have uh, if you made some food from my ground, if it was some beef would be, oh you so lovely this, so tender, you can suck it away. <laughs> she, if you could suck your Sunday roast through a straw, she was happy. Well because she didn't have any teeth. Right, exactly. Basically they got to about the age of... 60 or something and it was as though they were just waiting to die it was strange they and they lived for another or my grandfather lived for at least another 25 years <laughs> <laughs> so it was you must have been gutted but in a, when my father uh, my father needed a winter coat a big heavy winter coat and he was thinking of buying one and um my grand said oh don't worry about that ron you can have your father's winter coat and um he said well but but you know he's he's still alive. What do you talk? You know he, he needs it when the coach. She went, no, he'll be dead soon. Just don't silly to waste it. Seems to waste it, you know, just wait. My father must have been waiting ten years for that winter coat. I love the fact he waited. You can, <laughs> you can see where did. Steve got it from. Of course he's waiting. Did. Stupid, I'm waiting now. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, you must be freezing. I am cold, but I'll tell you, it's a lovely coat. In English society, traditionally and now, is manners. Mm. I mean, obviously manners change, but etiquette. what is etiquette? What is good manners? 
um, I think that a lot of that has been lost. Well, I was thinking the other day, have you ever heard of the finishing school? Yeah. Car? Yeah, of course. Do you know that? Uh, no. The idea is that, you know, the sort of gentrified ladies, after they finished their education, they would go to finishing school where they would literally be taught, you know, how to- Knives and forks, walking with a book on your head, just things like that, what to say. I mean, that's I mean, it's like, it's, it's like a, a year of being Eliza Doolittle, isn't yeah. it? Don't put your elbows on the table. If you start start from outwards, going inwards with cutlery. You know, you eat soup, the spoon goes away. There's things like the the fork. Uh, you're never meant to face those prongs uh, up. That you, so you either stab your peas, or you know, mm. there's ways of eating soup. You know, the spoon needs to be moving away from yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Scooping it up and bring it back to your mouth. I mean. It's crazy, but, you know, the people that subscribe to that stuff would look at the way you live your life, the way you eat your food, Carl, and would be appalled. Yeah, but In the same way we think that's absurd, they would think you're a disgrace. But who's, uh, as long as you're enjoying it. No, they would say no. Well, no, there are certain things that I can't stand. I can't stand eating with a mouth open. I think that's rude. I, 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 I ban chewing gum on the set of a film, because it, uh, I think it's rude. I think it's rude. Those people stand there talking to you. Yeah, but we all know you're a preposterous hypocrite. I mean, the way you no, eat food, come on. No, I don't eat with my mouth open. I don't, uh, I do eat with just my right hand, smash it and scoop it in, but, then, but I see nothing wrong with that. I would say it was slightly rude when you're ordering the bill and getting up to leave yeah. when I'm still finishing my main course. Yeah. I'd say there was a touch of rudeness about that. But I go into that. a restaurant to eat. Yeah, but you're supposed to wait when you're with the other people and let them finish as well. This is my ideal restaurant. It is empty. They know what I want, and it's waiting for me when I walk in. I leave, still chewing, and I go put it on my bill. That's yeah. the ideal restaurant for me. Yeah. You're pretty much there. Yeah, I, I try and, I try and, that's what I try and, try and do, yeah. Um, but, you know, there are certain things. I am one for manners. I think, I, I hate rudeness, I hate lateness, I hate all those things, but some of them are ridiculous. The elbows on the table is arbitrary. Why? I mean, there's a reason you say please and thank you, because it shows courtesy. Um, th those make sense. There's a reason you don't talk when you're eating, because it goes over and it's disgusting. There's a reason you don't lick your fingers and then put it back in the chips, because someone else has got to share that. But don't put your elbows on the table or, or start with that fork. I think it's ludicrous. You know there's those rules when you meet a member of the royal family, for instance, if you were at the royal variety before and you met the queen, mm. there's various rules they yeah, tell you, you about- Yeah, you don't fart or call her love. <laughs> exactly, for, for one. But also you don't speak until you're spoken to, you have to do a slight bow. I was um, invited to the, the palace a couple of times. The first time was after the office sort of broke and I got an invite, um, with a company of the uh, Majesty of the Queen would like you to come to a, one of those dinner parties and um, I know what you're thinking, why didn't you get one? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Well, well, well wait, 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 I was, I was a big shot quicker than you because I was in it. Um, don't forget you didn't appear until um, uh, series so. two. If we'd, if we'd split the atom, they would invite both of us. <laughs> Not just a guy who does the press conference. <laughs> so, so, the thing came through and I thought, oh, I, don't, I didn't, I, I was worried about it to be honest. Um, but it just said, I will be attending, I will not be attending tick the box and I couldn't bear to just tick I will not be attending because it was too harsh so there was a RSPV number and I phoned up and it was obviously the the, the head of the house or a butler or I, d I don't know someone who, and he went hello Buckingham Palace and I said hello it's Ricky Gervais I just got an invite to come and uh, um and I, I, it sounds weird but I couldn't bear to just tick I will not be attending um I just he went well you're the first person ever to bother to do that thank you so much I went, oh, um, my pleasure, sorry I can't make it. And, but, I, I don't think that's weird. It is strangely brutal. It is strangely brutal, isn't it? I wonder if they've changed it by now. Yeah, there's a little asterisk, thanks to Ricky Gervais, <laughs> it now says, <laughs> I am too fat and lazy and busy eating cheese to visit your majesty. I, what I think is this, that no one's ever ticked I will not be attending. Right, yeah. So it was never a problem. And so why did you not want to go? Um, I don't know, I just thought it was a bit intense and um, I'd, be, I'd turned down all those things. I, I think I would like to go now just to look around. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I just felt a bit funny just being invited there. I, I was invited to all those things at the uh, um, Downing Street as well mm. and I just thought, you're inviting me because I'm on the telly now because I'm famous. Well, where was my invite when I was on the dole? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? With respect, I wouldn't have invited you. <laughs> 
<laughs> circa 1983. <laughs> no, I haven't got a problem with, um, you know, going to Palace or, um, except I do have a problem with sort of being wheeled around as, as a celebrity. Because I used to think if I was ever invited, uh, to get given an MBE or a knighthood or something, I'd be like, nah, I'm not part of the system, you know, I'm a rebel, I'm outside. Now I think it would be be quite cool. Well, I only think it's a problem for a comedian, because, you know, we're sort of meant to dish it out, and it's difficult to dish it out if you're being seen. What I do find weird is the idea of having to bow and scrape before people, because I'm told to do that. Well, like, I, 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 I what I find is that idea of I'm, I'm, a, I'm obligated to be respectful to such a degree, just because someone's the queen. Like, obviously, I'd always be respectful, but... Why can't I speak when she turns? What I don't understand. That's I find a strange what idea. What do you say though? Well, I just say you know, honour to meet you, Majesty. But you know, I don't understand why I can't initiate that. Why? If I, I, I find don't think it she'd weird. mind that if if you went if you went honour to meet you before she'd spoken. What she's going to say? She's going to go cheeky cunt. <laughs> I talks first, lanky. <laughs> Obviously the future is relative, um, us talking now, the future is one thing, the past is another, but to someone in the past, we are in the future. So, Carl, if you could go back into any era, okay, you are what you are now, you are you as you sit there now, your age, with all your memories and all your input and all your advantages on, uh, ages gone by and all your advantages over people gone by, um, where would you go, what would you do? Don't worry about ramifications, like if you squash a butterfly you come back here and we're all speaking a different language and... Yeah, but I don't, I don't believe all that. Of course you should. They should have picked something better than a butterfly. The thing about if you kill a butterfly, there's a volcano somewhere. Right. There. Okay, what did that noise mean? Yeah. <laughs> It's just, it's just passing the book, isn't it? It's kind of like blaming a butterfly. Like, like, they only live about a day. So you blame it and it's dead anyway and there's no evidence left. It's a stupid is argument. Is that the theory? Is that yeah, the theory that you're blaming a butterfly for a volcano? I'm not sure that's it, is it? Yeah, it, no, it's it wafts about, its wings it, and when it causes... It wafts, right, when a butterfly wafts, if you stop the waffery, then the whole world has changed because there was no waft on a certain day. Okay, but that means that everything's part of the causal web. It's it's a model for determinism. So things do, yeah. Of course, things have an effect on everything else. Yeah, but I'm just saying that's a bad example. The butterfly doing its wings. Well, no. Something yeah, no. Uh, that I'm butterfly. That butterfly might have um, flown in through a car window and frightened someone, and they crashed. Use a wasp. <laughs> Why, why is that preferable? Because you do panic. I've been in a car when there's a wasp knocking about. It's terrifying. But I, 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 yeah, I can see how that could cause a disaster. But a butterfly, you just go open the other window. I love that you've won him over to that theory now, just by substituting a butterfly and a wasp. <laughs> you think back to perhaps when you were teenager or even before when you were growing up. You had visions, I suppose, of your own personal future and how that would play out how you could change the way you lived your life in order to affect the future. I mean, I was very, I'm very lucky in, the, in, in some regards in that one of my ambitions was always to be involved with comedy. Yeah. And, um, I was very it's funny, though, excited isn't it? about that and I was lucky that I've managed to achieve that. A lot of people don't even know what they want from their future. Well, the other thing is that when you dream of where you'll be in 20 years time, you don't change the future. You don't change the buildings and no. the, the, you just think of yourself sort of richer having a happier life. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So, um, And also, I was, always, I was always slightly more handsome in the future. <laughs> <laughs> but I kept imagining I would grow a little more handsome. Uh, people kept, so my grandmother would keep telling me, you, you know, you'll fill out when you fill out a bit. She was obsessed with me filling out. This is why she would feed me endlessly. The idea that somehow if I was yeah. less gangly. Yeah, it worked with me though. Yeah, right. you just, you really well, filled I, out. I filled out, yeah. And it's funny because, um, I still forget what I look like now in the present. Yeah. In my head, I still look like I used to look. Then I catch a little glimpse of myself in the shop window and go, who's that fat old? Oh, no. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm yeah. so much better. But you did have a long, you've, you've journeyed a long way. I mean, you, good looking lad, and you are, I mean, it's preposterous. Mm. I mean, everyone I work with or meet who's seen a picture of you as a teenager doesn't, understand it. I mean, I pretty much look the same, you know what I mean? I haven't changed much. Um, I'm still a constant 
disappointment to myself in a way, you know. Mm -hmm. When I put on a tuxedo, that's the best I'm ever going to look, and I don't look like James Bond. Yeah. Whereas you at least had a moment where you, you looked around. I mean, it's, honestly, it's Jane I feel sorry for. Because, mm. oh, I mean, she did not sign up for this. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've all, we've all no, changed. No, I've seen pictures of her in the past. She ain't changed much. No, I don't mean that. Whereas I mean, you... I mean, we've all changed. We've all, we all changed. Carl used to have hair. Yeah, but he had, uh, you, by your own admission, had it for long. You, you, you didn't have it hair for long, did you? you no, it wasn't. It wasn't. Didn't want to hang around my hair. It was never. I've told you, it, it didn't feel needed, so it went. I never did anything with it. It was hair of a Chinaman, wasn't it? Even the hairdresser said, "He said yeah. you can do nothing with this." <laughs> so what do you mean? He said, "It's just too. It's all limsy." <laughs> limsy. <laughs> Sorry, was that th that's a limp or flimsy? I reckon. Uh, well, no, that yeah. lim limsy is uh, is a Chinaman um, that, that, that uh, <laughs> gave his name yeah. to the, uh, the li limp hair uh, of, the, of the Chinese. So place. you think your hair bailed on you because it was not getting treated well enough? I think that's I think that's true. I think that's right. how it works. But yeah, I know what you mean. You sort of. I sort of think about if I've changed and that, but I don't think I have that much. Mm. I still have the same sort of thoughts. Um, I like olives now, <laughs> which I didn't okay. like probably three years ago. Right. Mm. Wow. Um, but you can, if you eat four in a row, you get a taste for them. And I thought, go on, then I have five. <laughs> and right. I thought, yeah, they're all right these. <laughs> so that's different. But other than that, I mean, these. So what, what, what were your dreams and ambitions when you were young? I didn't have any. Right. It was kind of, uh... Five years old, what do you want to be? What was uh, the thoughts of the future? I didn't, I didn't worry. At five years old, you're not worrying about okay. work and that. Ten. What, what's your, what's your hopes and fears of all these years I met in thee tonight? I wasn't worrying about work till about... till about 13, 14. I was thinking, right, you know, people who were new had left school. They weren't getting work. And I was thinking, oh, I don't want to be like that. Um. That's when I did boxing, you know, that, I could have gone down that route. Mm. Got into boxing, didn't I? Mm. How many uh, fights do you have? Don't know, about three or four. Yeah. Uh, How long is it, just when does brain camp damage kick in? I guess it can, I mean, I guess it can happen almost instantly, I mean, it must, that must be, must be part of it. Were you, were you really, did you really get a bad beating on one of those fights? Yeah, Leroy gave us a right good clacker in. Mm. Uh, clackering. Right. Yeah, the thing is, your jab was a bit limsy, but Leroy's was clackering. <laughs> uh, then there was the dancing. I don't remember mm. this. What break dancing? Well, I did that. I did a bit of body popping. Yeah. Did you ever th really think that you might do this in the future? You did never know, do you? But did you at the time? Do you remember thinking, oh, I could, I wouldn't mind doing well, this? I must, have, I must have, must have thought that for me to go. Well, let's let's try and join, you know, Twiggy's dance club and all that. And uh, my mum and dad always sort of. You know, if you want to give it a go, give it a go. With the boxing, uh, you know, me, me dad was saying, right, I'll get you the proper shoes and that, and my mum's like, don't, don't bother getting in them yet. Let's see if he sticks at it for like four months, because they were about 30 quid for Let the shoes. Let him carry on in my furry slippers. Uh, then with the dancing, <laughs> it was the same thing. I said, oh, I need some leg warmers and that. And, uh... These tights are just as good, come on. <laughs> no, my dad... Pop on your nan's tights. My dad gave me, um, like his, uh, he, he cut, like, the, the sleeves off his shirt. Amazing. <laughs> and that were your leg warmers. Yeah. Amazing. But uh, it's funny, when you're a kid it doesn't bother you. But surely cut them off a jumper. No, yeah. I, d I, I don't know why. I know it looked after I had cuffs on leg warmers. <laughs> <laughs> but, That's amazing! But when you're That's a kid, amazing. you, what you, you think roll them up. It must have looked Lawrence Dwayne and Bowen doing a handstand. <laughs> 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 but then, you know, that didn't last long and then my dad, you know, it, I was getting older now and he's like... Dad needed his shirt back for a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as long as he didn't take his jacket off, it was fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Dad, I'm, I'm I'm losing my hat. I need a hat. I don't need a bloody hat. Pop my pants on, Fed. <laughs> but then you've got to make sure you you try and get a job. And school was sort of saying. So fifteen now. Bang on. Why the twiggies? Why did you stop going down twiggies? Well, it was shut, wasn't it? Amazing. Oh, it closed down. It closed down. It had a load of toilet rolls in there. It'd been turned into like a storage unit. I've never really had a had like a dream. I've just bumbled along. Mm. Because, the, the, like I've said, it's that, it's that thing of Clackers, sort of, bumbled, um, Limsy. It's like, call my fucking bluff. <laughs> there's no point sort of wishing for too much, because if you don't get it, you'll be fed up. So it's better just to sort of go, well, let's see what's around the corner. This is what I've said to you about a sat-nav system. Right. It? It's the same thing. Mm. Yeah, sure, have the sat-nav, type in where you want to go, and it'll take you straight there. Mm. But what I say is, use the back streets. Mm. 
have a look around. Turn off. Don't go straight ahead. Turn right. Mm. The little dead ends. Yeah. Have a well, look. You might get mugged. Have a look. Don't go down the dead ends. Why not? You've got a reverse back There's nothing there. It's dead end. No, but have a look. Well, there's nothing there. It's dead end. What's the road doing there, then? Well, it's a dead end. It's yeah, but there must be something down there. There's nothing. It's, dead, it's just ends. It's just a wall. Right, so it's not a problem. Reverse. Do, 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 well, don't do, go down do. in the first place if you know it's a dead end. Don't tell people to go down a dead end. They've got to reverse out. Difficult. Well, I'd say just have a look, you see. That's the difference between me and you. I'd right. have a look down the dead it's end. It's dead end, no, no, don't worry, it's What's dead end. What's dead end? nothing, mate. Dead end. R rubbish? Just yeah, no, no rubbish. nothing. Dead nothing end. at all? Yeah, no, but going down there. Dead end. Right, so I'll go, well, I'll just have a look for myself, because I don't believe you. Okay, well, go on then. Right, I'll have a look. Yeah, oh, right. look at this I've found. What have you found? S box of money that you didn't know about. <laughs> <laughs> all I'm saying is it could be He anything. has still got the brain of a ten-year-old, <laughs> hasn't he? Of money. He's still got the brain of a ten-year-old. <laughs> I'm just, uh, set your stall out. Right. So where's the stall? Where are you setting the stall? Not in the because <laughs> yeah, there's no there's free there's traffic. There's no thoroughfare, yeah. You want, you want to be on this a sort of public highway. Where are you setting the stall out? What are you selling? What are you selling? Well, this is what I'm saying to you. What are you selling I'm first? I'm selling a mixture of stuff. What? Like what? O all sorts. What have you bought it with? A bag of money you found in the dead end? Leg warmers. Right, you got you got le new leg warmers with, um, do you want, have you got, do you want cufflinks with them? <laughs> what? Do you want cufflinks with them leg warmers? <laughs> well, now, why would I do that? Well, you got to fucking look smart, ain't you, you cunt? <laughs> <laughs> so you're selling, uh, what are you selling? In <laughs> so, you, yeah. se you set your stall out. Yeah, right. Now, yes. isn't it dangerous to sell all the same product in that shop? Right. Okay, I where's, don't know what you're where's the analogy going? This yeah. is a metaphor. I think it's a metaphor. Yeah. Um, or similes, uh, yeah. What, what, what are you selling? What are you selling first? Bang. Bang. Two, Bang three, four. On. No, but Quick, this is, is what I'm apprentice? saying to you. This is, is what I'm saying to you, though. I right. just said to you. Yeah. You. Yeah. Well, I don't know what you wanted to do. You haven't told me. But right. I'm saying. Do you want me to tell you what I want to do when I want to be well, at five years old? I wanted to own a sweet shop until my mum said, "You know, you got to buy the sweets first. All right? From ten, I wanted to be like a scientist. Fifteen, a vet kicked in. But Carry at some on. point, you jettisoned all of that to try and pursue a pop career. Twenty, I wanted to be a pop star. Twenty-five, I thought I'd better get a job. <laughs> well, at thirty, I did. <laughs> me saying turn off the main road and do a right. Yes. Is saying. Just have a look around, in the same way that if you go into a shop- It was a metaphor, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. It was, yeah. Yeah. And in the same way that if you go into a shop, mm. you're thinking I'm getting a uh, quarter of bonbons. Right, a bonbons. <laughs> bon bombs. Well, by okay. the time you get to the counter- You're clackered. And you get some licorice all sorts instead, because you yeah. thought, actually, I forgot about them. Sorry, now this isn't a metaphor, is it? This is re this is a real shop now, isn't it? I just, uh, I just mean, you're gonna, be, you're gonna be let down. You're gonna be very, very disappointed with life. Mm. If, um, you know. What? What? Be what? If, what? if what? If what? If, if what? If, if what? The thing you're aiming for. Yeah. Doesn't happen. But what if it does happen? I'd like to take issue with this, because there's a lot of young people who listen to our podcasts, and if they listen to you this tripe, that if you try for something in life it won't happen, so don't bother, I think it's a bloody disgrace. No. Imagine if Leona Lewis had thought that when she went on the bloody X Factor. She wouldn't have got punched by that bloke in that- <laughs> 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 Well, that doesn't make sense. But you know what I mean, but she would not oh. be living her dreams. Yeah, but we don't know what Leona wanted to do. She might she have had a backup plan. That's why she's done it. She might have had a backup plan. Yeah, but she fulfilled the main ambition, which was to sing. That's why she went on the show. She didn't go in there because she thought I might want to work down a branch of Waterstones. You think she went in there and said, uh, "Quarter bomb bombs." She's like, "Oh, this is uh, X Factor." But she went, "Oh, go on then." <laughs> well, I was saying. Well, what about the, the 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 girl who looked like a fat baby? She went on there with a dream. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Yeah! But nah. the point is, I'm not saying you all have to go on the X Factor if you're a hopeless idiot. I'm saying if you've got a little bit of talent and you pursue it, it might take you somewhere. If you want to be a vet or a doctor or pop star, you might have a chance. You might as yeah. well have a stab for it. They said, no, that's all right, I'll just sit around in my underpants. Yeah, they're doing a new one, the X Ray Factor, where you can actually, you know, become a uh, top radiologist. <laughs> <laughs> but I've said this for, for an idea. I think that's, they should do that. Because how many singers do we need in the world? You see, that's the thing. We're talking yeah. about the future. Yeah. I, I think it, we're not going to talk anymore. I think we're, we're all. We're, we're, it's going to be like living in an opera. The way yeah. things are going on now, everyone wants to sing. Yeah. Whereas, if you did a TV program to try and get a doctor, you know, X-ray factor. You know, yeah. it's all about you know getting in young kids, do live surgery. You know, there's big queues anyway. People are queuing up to have operations done. Yeah. So you say, look, Elder. You have got a problem with your, with your left bunion. You can either wait for your proper doctor and hospital, but it's going to be a, a two year waiting list. Or you can or have Jedward do it. Are for you me. free Saturday night, live? Because <laughs> we've got two 17 year olds who are going to do it. Hilda! She comes out. 
they, they start... <laughs> a little voice. I've never heard him do a little voice before. So do I'm it, wait, I'm okay, okay. So this is okay. What is this? This is a talent show where people can have a go at being doctor. a doctor. Yeah. Right? Well, this they is need... like something from the Middle Ages. <laughs> but they need, but they need volunteers who would rather have um, an apprentice, or someone have a go. Okay. It's not even an apprentice, it's someone no. with no training at all. Yeah. They learn how to do major operations in a week. But no, not major ones, that's for the final. You do a heart, <laughs> oh, of course, you yeah, you've got to transplant. Sure. But you're a building heart up. transplant for the final. <laughs> that's so anyway, amazing. so it's Hilda, and Hilda's not the person, she's not operating, she's just the person who needs a bunch no, she's, the, she's the foot problem, yeah. So she comes right. in, they have a quick chat with her. Have a chat with her, how's your life been? Bit of cold play under her. She's yeah, going, yeah. oh, it's terrible, I can hardly walk and all that, and they right. go, right. Here's a fowl who looks like a baby. <laughs> and then... And you think this is a good... you don't see any problems with this so far? You've not, not identified any concerns yet? If it means you get younger people into other jobs other than singing... Mm. I agree with you. I think it's crazy that everyone now just wants to be uh, a famous, a singer or something, and we don't need them. They're just contriving it. All they're doing is knocking the last one off the top number one spot. It's just a factory. But I'm not talking about everyone should try and be a singer, am I? What I'm saying is sometimes you're allowed to pursue your dreams and they might be, you may, you may fulfill those dreams. Yeah, There's nothing Steve, wrong with that. Steve, it may be that you Steve. want to operate on a woman called Hilda or a bunny. Pursue that dream. But according Steve. to your negative views, we shouldn't even try and do that Steve, either. Go what on. saying is? Go on. What's he saying? Leona was an example. I'm not saying everyone should try and be like Leona. No, but no. Listen, listen, listen to his point, Stephen, okay. because he's got a very good point coming up. Here it now. comes. This is it. Okay. He hasn't said a, 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 a normal word yet, but he's going to say some now and they're all going to be profound. People's dreams. Mm. Out their own dreams. Oh, hold on. What do you yeah. mean by that? Okay, keep, that going, no, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. No, 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 no. Yeah, He'll explain. Don't you don't need to ask any questions. He'll explain. Because they think they know what they want because mm. they see it on the telly. Mm. They see, you know, someone singing a song and they go, "I want to do that." Yeah. So all I'm saying is, change the dreams. Mm. Change the dreams. Yeah. To what? Surgery. They're watching that. <laughs> they see an elder happy with a better foot. The doctor's getting all the praise to go, I want a bit of that action. That's what it's about. They don't want to be singers. Mm. They want to be known. They want to be famous. Yeah. So, fine. Have a bit of fame, but do mm. some good. Fix Hilda's foot. Sorry, was that the end of the point? Yeah, because all we've done, we've, we've changed the dreams. Dreams that- Well, um, you've hit on a good point there, because what is astounding is that when you, you know, um, people are inundated with praise for people who are just- clothes horses they are just skinny nobodies who don't do anything except have their picture taken and their role models for you know i'm not talking about um you know anyone in particular but it's just these people who uh, you know want to be seen with other celebrities and marry celebrities and be a celebrity people think that's an easy life because they're getting rewarded for it and yet someone who's stuck in a laboratory trying to come up with a cure for aids they don't know or care about them and okay can i just point out though that if we're gonna have a go at people being successful making money and being well known for doing nothing of any value I point you to the man sat opposite me here. <laughs> and that's, hey, I tell you, there's times when I, you know, lie awake at night thinking, what was my dreams? Yeah, but- I have to be a little doctor. But I've got doctor. a new boy there. Yeah. Hold on. And two houses. I'd love to, I'd, I'd love to be a little doctor. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's past me now, there's no way I can, I can go back. Uh, well. But it would have been You're wrong. wrong. Carl Pilkington! <laughs> Hilda! <laughs> what is it? What, what now, Hilda, what's up with you? I've got, um, I've got terrible piles. Um, uh, it's, there's some, there's some sort of blockage up there. I, I haven't gone to the, uh, excuse me, I haven't gone to the toilet for a week. Well, Carl, can you unblock Hilda's arse? Now live, unblocking Hilda's arse. Carl Brokington! <laughs> I thought she had bad feet. No, her feet were, no. Jedward fixed her feet. There's a lovely job, that's why they stayed in last week. Her arse is worse than her feet. It's because she's been off her feet for so long, because she couldn't walk. Her arse took the brunt of it, and it's just terrible. Piles of burst, and it's blocked up there, where all she just eats is cheese because she's so depressed. I'd, I'd just, I'd probably knock it on the head there. I'd Why? just say, because I'd just say, like going back to the, the street thing, I've gone down the wrong avenue. Right. I thought, this isn't for me, I didn't know I'd be, you know, eye to eye with this. <laughs> What's up? It's not for me, and that's how you find out that it's not for you, by doing it. 
Right. But at least I gave it a go. So this the same as you had one fight with Leroy, you went along to a dance studio, it was shut, you've seen Hilda's ass, and it's turned you off proctology. Once again, you've just abandoned it. Yeah, well, that's a, there's Have no a point. go! Have a go! Just feel inside Hilda's back passage. Feel the blockage. Right. No, because the audience have already decided. They've seen a weakness in me, they're gonna vote me out. No! So there's no point me getting dirty fingers for this. <laughs> <sighs> well, that's about it for the Ricky Gervais Guide to the Future. The next audio book in this series is the Ricky Gervais Guide to the Human Body. Look forward to that. Will do. It's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Goodbye. And the little round-headed shaven chimp that is forever Carl Pilkington. All right.